So here you can see I've uh, boxed out for the wheel well. I've made the base for the bed that goes up against the wall. Finished this wall, including the electrical outlet. And I've made a decision about what I'm going to do with the walls as far as color. Over here I thought, yeah, that wood grain looks pretty cool. But then when I put it up against the console here, and this is going to be the centerpiece of the conversion, is the console, the control panel, the desk of the ambulance. So I want something that's going to blend with it. So what I've decided to do, I'm going to go ahead and paint this wall and all the other walls this gray color here. Probably even paint over the red. Not a big fan of that red. And so I'm going to paint it gray. And that's going to tie everything together in here. And so what it's going to look like is that I just took an ambulance, took out a few cabinets, put in a sofa and a bed. And if that's how it looks, that's awesome. That means I really did my job in making everything look seamless and like it's always been here. So that is a goal, but you and I both know what it took to do this. So here's a before shot of this back section here and you can see all the tangle of wires and breaker box and everything that I get to deal with and different levels of materials. So this is before but let me show you the after. See the after you just don't see anything it's just a board and I did include the switch that allows the back two airbags to go down when the door is open. I kept that in got that just made it very simple. I just put screws just around the edges again so and then I'll put trim pieces. Now there's going to be <laughs> a lot of trim work. You can see here how much trim work it's going to take to do all this. But I bought something that's going to help me do that. So knowing I was going to have to make a lot of difficult cuts on the trim, I went ahead and bought a new tool. I've never owned a table saw but I have invested in one and it has been really cool in helping some, making some cuts. Now this is this wouldn't be a really heavy duty one. It's by Porter Cable. I'll put a link down below. But for what I'm going to do, light duty and all, this is fine. Um, about the maximum cut is about 16 inches wide. One thing I like, it's got a lot of safety features. It's got this guard here. It's got a guide. It's hard to see. There's actually a guide down inside here. There you go. That keeps the the wood split as it's coming through so it doesn't bind up. Then you have these teeth that help make sure it doesn't kick back. It's adjustable. It also does 45 degree angles. So I'm, gonna, I'm learning how to use this and it's pretty cool and it's allowed me to make a special cut today. So I've got, I need a 2x4 that's wide at the top and then has a notch and narrows down. So this tool was very helpful today in making that board. Alright, I think that looks a good bit better. So I framed out Tucked up all the wires, mounted the electrical box, and I'll show you why that saw is really helpful. So it's full thickness right here, and then it steps down here to something thinner. And over here, there's two steps that had to step in, and then step in again. So that saw really helps make that cut so that everything ends up nice and flush. So we can put the board on it. And here we have it. I'm not worried about the wood grain going different directions since I'm going to be painting now. So I want to get the most effective use out of um, the pieces. So uh, what do you think? Look a little bit better? I was able, what was it? Perfect trim cutting around this box. So I may end up having to trim this out a little bit more or caulk it probably. Don't know yet. I want to make this wall pretty easy to unscrew and get behind. So I might do little trim pieces on that. So let's see how the pair looks. So again, lots of trim work, and I did mess up this board pretty bad over here. So when you do, eh, just use your old one for a template. So here's the one I messed up on, and between that one and the other one, I managed to slaughter an entire 4x8 sheet of this material. Fortunately, it's just $15 a sheet, and I'm sure I'll find other ways to use the scraps. One of the next steps is trying to repair the ceiling, and if you notice, this ceiling has an extremely gloss finish. You can see it reflects almost like a mirror. And it's not fiberglass, at first I thought it was, but what it is, it, it is applied material, a masonite, something over wood. Uh, the closest thing I could find was at Lowe's, but it doesn't have the shine. And also, they, they're able to form this to different shapes. I don't know how they do that. So this is the material I got at Lowe's, and it's got a very glossy finish on it, but you can see it's not that super reflective finish. It's very smooth. And I'm guessing it's probably not going to be a very good color match. So my options are to just go ahead and put it up there and see what it looks like. Or I've got some white Rust-Oleum high gloss acrylic paint. But I would have to probably paint the entire ceiling. And that would be a real pain in the neck. So this is something that's just going to have to be sorted out when I get there. 
All right, so this morning I've got some wood strips. I put in some wood strips here and here. Put the insulation up and cut the piece over here, the same thing. I put an extra board right here and here and up in here. Got all the insulation and cut the board. So it's just time to screw it in. And the ceiling is done. So you can definitely see it there and the lights kind of catch the edge of it. But when you take it as a whole, and when you get up in here, it's not bad. Here's the LED lights. I've really got those sorted out. So I've got a nice high setting and then a low setting. I used some stainless steel screws with a little surround. Kind of gave it a nice, nice look. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and paint before I do the trim because while the trim pieces are off, it's going to be making it a lot easier to paint. So what I did is I went down to Lowe's and I told them, you know, this map was created with such high quality and such care and detail. I really don't want to do it anything but the best I can afford to do. So I went and I asked for what is the best paint, most durable paint you've got. And this is the Sherwin-Williams Infinity Paint. And it's about $50 a gallon, so I got two gallons of it. Probably don't need two, but you know, you always need a little more than one. So I'm going to use this paint and start getting to it. All right, so I'm one coat in. I don't want to show you yet until I got it all ready, but I just wanted to, to go over this paint. This is an amazing paint. I have never used a really high quality paint before, and I can tell you it's double the thickness of regular paint. And what's cool is when you put it on the wall, uh, it sticks on the wall. It doesn't want to run. It doesn't want to drip and it just goes on and it sticks it's like it's like cake batter and i really like this I'm making it fast and if i was doing uh if i was going over paint this would definitely be a single coat process but look how the paint just sticks on the roller also i like using the foam roller because i found that the fuzzy ones the fuzz tends to come off plus you tend to get a texture and i'm going for a look of like a laminate uh wall so uh i want it to be as smooth as possible well, I gotta say, it's starting to look like an ambulance again. Uh, here's a neat little strip. This is where that seam came together. And I just got a very thin piece of aluminum and put these neat little screws in. This is just a wood screw with a little washer. So a little tiny wood screw and just put it through this little finish washer. And it gives it a real nice look. And so this is just screwed to the top board and the mother lower board is just overlapped and is just tucked up under there and i love the paint absolutely love the paint i went ahead and painted the boxes even though the boxes will be carpeted i thought i had the extra paint and we can go ahead and seal that up and you can still see the seam down here but there'll be that's where the bed's going to flip up and some cabinets and also i'm just going to leave that alone i don't know how that's going to turn out but it's looking wonderful and I had so much fun today and just looks great really was enjoyable now this end looks great and I think I may work on the trim next in the back <laughs> but <laughs> it's still a trade wreck on this end but I just wanted to kind of get something done and start practicing on all the little things before I start undertaking that project 